My name is Ken Dawoody. I'm a structural engineer working at Arrow. I'd like to tell you about a project that we've been working with US-based charity Bridges to Prosperity for the past three and a half years. I was approached by a colleague at Arab who was interested in putting together a small team of young engineers who would oversee the development of a tool which would act as a learning resource, a design tool, as well as a set of drawings which would enable engineers in uh, developing countries to design and build uh, their own bridges. I led a team as project manager and structural engineer in the design and development of a pilot bridge project to validate the tool's assumptions in collaboration with B2P's country manager. The pilot project is a 50 meter suspension footbridge in Murugaya, Rwanda, which will serve approximately 10,000 local inhabitants and it facilitates their access to schools, local markets and hospitals which otherwise would take hours to reach on foot and during the wet season would be inaccessible due to the uh, fast-moving and extremely deep river um, which people have died uh, crossing. The bridge was built over a six-week period of which approximately four weeks were the substructure excavations and labor-intensive concrete course. Then, taking the team of eight Arab engineers, we built the bridge with B2P's volunteers as well as the local workforce. The entire superstructure took 10 days to build. After site safety briefing, we could start leveling the ground to allow scaffold towers to be erected adjacent to the structural tower foundations. And the towers were assembled horizontally with one end above concrete pockets. Once completed, the towers were gently raised using pulleys that passed over the nearest scaffold and a winch which was positioned across the river. Once both towers were set, four lengths of a 100 meter long cable could be hoisted up over the towers and leveled to the desired sag. These were very labor intensive exercises where collaboration with the local workforce was vital. The suspenders were all cut and bent to the required lengths and fixed to the cross beams on the ground. These could then be deployed on the cables from either side of the river using the scaffold towers and just slid out to the centre of the span. Once those were all in place, the decking could be nailed into the cross beams and the safety netting could be installed. So some of the difficulties involved in building a project like this are the limitations of the tools that are available in country. It's very rudimentary, this sort of stuff you would find at B&Q. Um, and uh, this caused, well, it made everything a lot more um, time consuming and a lot more difficult to get done, uh, especially when carrying half a ton steel section from one side of the river to the other, um, where this really uh, meant that we had to tap into the, the local skills. Um, these guys out in Rwanda, they are extremely strong and their offering for this was to just get on with it. They lifted up this half a ton piece of steel work and just carried it across the river. It's something that uh, we tried to, uh, to get involved with, but it's, it's, not, um, it's not our main forte. <laughs> right now I'm involved in the incorporation of the lessons learned from the pilot scheme back into the tool and coordinating this exercise with the 50 plus volunteers that we now have at Arrow. Once all these lessons learned are incorporated into it, then it will be freely accessible to download under B2P supervision to design and build their own bridges. What I've personally been able to take back into other projects is sort of a more pragmatic feel. Engineering is real. We're actually building things. This is not just a design office exercise. And this project has really highlighted that to me. Um, so it really helps on other projects where I think, oh, well, how would I really do it if I were on site? Um, and that feeds into all the designs that I, that I work on. This project with B2P has been a very interesting one. It's, it's very different from sort of the typical work that I do. And it's really brought a, a sense of personal fulfillment in terms of giving back the knowledge that I have gathered over the years that I've been working as a structural engineer. And it's really about giving that knowledge to people who really need it. And the fact that this is actually happening and that people are benefiting on a daily basis uh, from this work is extremely rewarding. And it really gives a sense of the power that structural engineering has.